Hi everybody and welcome to the second S2 lesson on film and media analysis. So just to give you a little reminder of the plan, lesson one which we've already done was about audience and purpose and this time we're moving on and we're going to be looking at camera angles. So we'll get started with a little task to get your brains warmed up. So again, we're going to be copying out these three words which have come from the academic words list and I'd like you to do that on a piece of paper and then I'd like you to use the words to make a sentence of your own. Take a picture and then add your work to the box which is on the left hand side here. So the words for this starter task are reaction, major and justify. So pause the video and do that first. Okay, as we say, we're going to be talking about camera angles today. So what do we mean when we say camera angles? Well, camera angles are important for lots of different reasons. Different shots can do a lot of different things. So for example, they can deliver important information. They can create an impact on the audience. They can help a little bit with editing, putting everything together at the end. They can be used to highlight an important point or they can make you feel a certain kind of emotion. So we're going to run through some of the different most important kinds of camera angles that you might need to know. So we're starting with a close-up. A close-up is a shot that takes in just the head and shoulders, so it shows a lot of emotion on the person's face and can be used to emphasise a character's importance. So here's an example of a close-up. Next is an extreme close-up, so as the name suggests, it's even closer. And that can be used to really emphasise close, intimate emotion. So it's normally only focusing on a small part of the person being filmed, and it can be used to highlight the importance of an object as well. So those are some examples of extreme close-ups, really zoomed in. Then we have a medium shot. So a medium shot shows the character from the waist up and it's used to show body language, costume and also what's in the background. So there we've got some examples. You can see just these characters from the waist up and a little bit of the setting there as well. Next is a long shot. So the character or object being filmed in a long shot is at a distance from the camera and is shown in the full environment. So it's used to show um, what things are surrounding the whole body and it's used also to show us the setting and the relationships between characters if there's more than one in the scene. So there's a wee example so you can see the whole body, a lot of the setting and you can take a guess at the relationship between these boys as well. High angle, so we're nearly there. High angle shots look down on a person or a character and this is usually done to make them look vulnerable or to suggest that they might be in some kind of trouble. So it's as though they're high up looking down on the character. And low angle, as I'm sure you've guessed, is just the opposite. So low angle shots point up towards a character from a position that's low down somewhere. And this is done to make a character look strong, important or intimidating. So you can see here the camera's low down and it's pointing up at the men's faces. Okay, and last of all, we've got over the shoulder shot. So an over the shoulder shot is usually seen when there's a conversation happening and these shots suggest a connection between the characters. So they look a bit like this. And now we're going to do a quick match up task. So there's a Word document attached to your assignment which shows a number of different pictures from film and TV. I think there are five. So for each picture, I'd like you to decide which type of camera angle is being used and then fill out the table below. So you can look at the images one to five and then I'd like you to write in what kind of camera angle you think is being used. So stop the video and do that now.
Okie doke, well done. So now I'd like you to think about finding some of your own examples. So I'd like you to pick three of the camera angles that you've learned about today and see if you can find an example of your own. So you can do this either by adding a picture that you found online or if you want to, you can use your iPad to take a picture at home using one of these kinds of angles and add that instead. So you should add the pictures to the space that's been provided for you on the next slide. And this is what it looks like. So you can add your three examples in the boxes and then underneath, if you write which type of angle they are, then that would be brilliant. Okay, the last thing we're going to do today is have a little bit of a reminder of the private reading. So we're used to this by now. So again, please remember that this is not an extension task. You must do this as part of today's lesson. I'd like you to take some time to do some reading towards your project. You should aim to do about 20 minutes of reading if you can, or more. And when you've finished, I'd like you to make some notes on characterisation, setting, structure and theme. And if you don't know what one of those things is, then please ask your teacher and they will be happy to go over it with you again. And remember that you might be looking at slightly different slides, but you should still make notes on the reading that you've done. Okay, a space has been provided for you on the next slide for you to make notes. And this is what it looks like. So title of the book, it doesn't matter if it's the same book you were reading last lesson. And there's space for you there to make notes on characterisation, setting, structure and theme. So you should pause the video, do the reading and then make those notes now before you hand in your work. And that's the end of the lesson. Well done. So remember to tag your teacher on Teams and ask them if you've got any questions at all about today's learning.